Uh, hello everybody, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics. Hi everybody, I'm Andy Chatfield, head of tech support here at PTZ Optics. Today is Tech Support Tuesday, so we are going to go over the difference between RS-232 and RS-485. But before we do that, just wanted to mention yesterday on our Monday vlog, we talked about the difference between YouTube and cable TV. Two technologies that are starting to become a little bit more interesting, so to take a look at that vlog. And then this Friday, our live stream is going to, we're going to be giving away a $10,000 to charity live on YouTube at 11 a.m., 2 p.m. Pacific. So let's get started, Andy. 11 a.m., 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. There you yes, go. Yes, that's right. Um, yes, think? so just like Paul said, we are just going to talk about the differences between RS-232 and RS-485 and a little bit of 422 as well, even though the cameras don't do that. Um, so why use, what is 232, what is 485, what are the differences, why do you use one over the other? Um, basically, RS-232 is the standard for serial control in this industry. It, is, uh, it consists of essentially three cables, transmit, receive, and ground. Um, are the most important. There are other things, different forms of the protocol that have other things built in. Um, but for the most part, it's received, transmit, and ground. Um, this means with 232, you have two-way communication between device A and device B, where device A can talk to device B, and device B can talk back to device A. Um, like I said, 232 is just the standard. It's been around since 1962. And it is very widely used. The DB9 connector goes right along with it that has been used universally in this industry. So um, with that being said, the cameras also do 485. Um, some people are asking, well, when, when should I use 485 or why would I use 485? 485 is actually a one-way communication. So device A can talk to device B, but device B can't talk back to device A. It works in a lot of situations where you don't need the device to provide feedback to the first device, which is like the PTZ cameras that we have. Um, we just need to issue commands to the camera and have the camera pan, tilt, zoom, and we're good to go. So um, one of the main limitations between 232 compared to 485 is you can get about 40 times the length out of 485 as you can out of 232. Um, it also means there's not as much information flowing down the RS-485, but the cameras don't really utilize the entire spectrum of bandwidth that the serial connection can supply anyway. So with 485, it's actually a lot more versatile. Um, with 232, the cameras come with this little cable, and it's just a DB9 connection here to the 8-pin mini DIN that fits in the back of the camera here. This is, it's very nice and easy to use, but if you want to extend this, you basically have to make a DB9 male to female cable or a DB9 female to 8-pin mini DIN at the exact length you need, which can be a pain. Um, I've talked to a lot of clients who want to utilize cabling already existing in their walls, like cat cables and stuff, to achieve control of the cameras via serial, um, in which case using 485 is actually really easy. You can cut a cat cable that goes from point A to point B, just use two of the connections inside. The RS-485 is plus and minus. Just do 485 plus and minus to uh, 485 plus and minus on the back of the joystick, and you're up and controlling your camera. So it definitely makes things a little easier being able to not use proprietary cables, not having to buy additional cables. You can just use standard cat cable or like 22-2, 22-gauge, two-channel cable and you can control your cameras all day long. Um, a lot of people, well, why should I use 232 then? Um, there's a lot of devices that take 232 and don't take 485. Um, that's a pretty common thing. Like I said, 232 is the standard in this industry, so that's why the cameras have both. Um, I did say I would mention 422. 422, the cameras don't have but it's basically just a two-way form of 485. It's the exact same limitations, the exact same distance lengths. Um, you just have transmit plus and minus and receive plus and minus. So you're able to talk between two devices. Um, as far as hooking up for the cameras, RS-485 is golden, as far as I'm concerned. It's very easy to set up, it's very reliable, it works. Now for, cascade, for cascading, that would be the same same type of cable, right? Yeah, for 485, you wanted to cascade, you would just get another piece of cable, go directly in where you plugged in the first one. I have the little two-pin two, two pin connector on the back of my camera. Just put two cables in there instead of one, 
or four instead of two if you want to look at both sides. And you can just run to your second camera. As long as you ID them correctly, you'll have no issues. Gotcha. So those two, that plus and minus there, you'd actually put in... Two cables, yep. Two I have cables. one red and one black in that two-port connector. You'd have two red and two black. One going back to the joystick, or one set going back to the joystick, and the next set going to camera two. Gotcha. Which is very easy to do, and you don't have to buy proprietary cables like the 232 requires. So I do want to mention... If you are using 232, we do have a specific cable. There's specific pinouts that we require um, for first the cable going between the joystick and the first camera. You can see that's the camera to PC connection. Now, theoretically, all you would really need on the computer 9-pin side is 2, 3, and 5. Receive, transmit, and ground. Those are the pins that you need. Um, and where they match up on the other side, which would be transmit, in, receive, in, and ground... That's all you need, essentially. Um, for the Cascade cable, this would be the cable going between camera 1 and camera 2 for RS-232. You do need five cables. Um, you need pin 1 to go to pin 2 on the other side, and pin 2 to go to pin 1 on the other side, and then 3 and 5 swap, and 4 stays straight through, as you can see from that, that picture of the camera Cascade cable. So I've had a lot of people call me and say they have a mail-to-mail eight pin mini in connection and they're just not getting control beyond the first camera and uh, once we sit down and, and get them going with the multimeter and they're able to pin it out they realize that that cascade cable does not have the right pin out so that is one good way to double check and see if it's wired correctly get a multimeter set it for just t testing continuity and hold it up to pin one on one side and then go through the other pins on the other side see where pin one lands does it land on pin two you're probably good check Pin three, does that land on pin five? You're, you're probably good. Does pin four go all the way through? You're definitely good. If any of those are different, you're probably not going to achieve camera control of the second camera. So it's always a good idea to just pin out cables if you have a multimeter handy. Uh, if you don't, it's a really good idea to buy one. They're 20 bucks um, and have one handy. And if you're installing the cameras, it can definitely help if, if you're running into control issues. Um, I've known a few people who they got a cable too short, so they just connected another cable to the other side. And um, the pins swap every time. Your transmit and receive swap. So once they, they added another cable to the run, it didn't work correctly. So you have to keep in mind that each extension is going to swap pins two and three, and you need them to be a certain way at the joystick end. So, so last question then uh, from me would be baud rates. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so basically a baud rate is um, takes into account the, the amount of information flowing down the cable as well as the cable length. So a lower baud rate, you can go further, but you can get less information traveling. Um, and it would be the opposite for a higher baud rate. You get shorter length, but more information. Got it. So that's right here, as you guys can see. Yeah, we always recommend just staying at 9600 baud rate. That's the um, default. That's setting. the default. That's you shouldn't run into any issues with the cameras as long as you're running at 96. If you start going down to 48 and 24, uh, certain commands might be missed. Um, stuff like that. Okay, is that everything? I think that's it. Uh, if you guys have any um, questions, definitely. Oh, excuse me. Definitely feel free to post a ticket on ptcoptics.com, and you can post a ticket from the knowledge base. Um, or right next to the knowledge base, there's a submit a ticket <laughs> button. So definitely, if you guys have any questions, if you're running into issues like this yourself, uh, if you have a scenario you just want to run by me and see what my thoughts are, definitely put in a ticket. I'll be happy to answer the, any questions you guys have. Don't forget to subscribe to get all of our updates on our latest videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a nice day. Bye, everybody.